Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and it's time to go through all 30 of the new unique masterpiece cards that are going to be in Kaladesh. That's right, all 30 have been spoiled already. Now, if you're not familiar, why did you not watch my video that was uploaded like an hour ago? But the short explanation is these are basically Expedition 2.0. They are ultra rares, one out of 144 packs, give or take, a little bit higher in uh, Kaladesh. And it's basically, hey, now I'm opening Kaladesh. Kaladesh is worth X. And I might also pull one of these. And you don't need them. They're not um, unique cards. They are all reprints or already exist in this set or a past set. Also known as reprints. Nobody needs them, but if you pull them, you've got free value, free money. So everybody already hating on them? What the hell is wrong with you? The first five are, of course, the Gear Hulks, which are going to be printed as, I believe all five of them are Mythics, in Kaladesh. So if you don't want the outrageously expensive um, Masterpiece Edition, you could just buy the regular ones. We got Torrential, Cataclysmic, Noxious, Combustible, and Verderous Gear Hulk, and they're all looking exceptionally amazing in the artwork. The next one is a reprint from Commander, and I mean the set called Commander from uh, approximately 2011, I believe. It's really honestly nothing special. It was only printed once, and it is worth around $11. Uh, and obviously, every one of these will be worth more. I mean, the existing Champion's Helm is worth about $11. Equip Creature gets plus two, plus two, and it equips for one, but costs three to get out. As long as Equipped Creature is legendary, it has Hexproof. Hard to get out, easy to move around, which is exactly the opposite of what you need with legendary creatures. Kind of a dumb card, in my opinion, but it looks pretty. Next up, we've got Aether Vial with the new spelling. They got rid of that A-E combination, weird, like, Greek, Latin, whatever the hell it was, and just put the letter A and the letter E. You know, what everybody but Wizards has been doing since, like, 1995 in computers. You know, for translation reasons, which is exactly why they stated they're doing this. So, what can I say about Aether Vial? It is one of the least fair, most ban-worthy cards in all of Modern, but it's not in a good enough deck to be banned. Simple as that. You can't just put crap out of the battlefield for free. That's too powerful. But unfortunately, nobody put this in a good enough deck. It's basically a Merfolk card. This was printed in uh, from the Vault Relics. It was also in the original Modern Masters. Otherwise, it was only in Darksteel. That's it. That's why currently it's about $45 to $50 for the original version. So expect that Aether Vial to be worth probably upwards of $75 to $100. So still doesn't make me like the card. If I get one, I'll be tempted to light it on fire. And I really hope they ban it soon. As you all know, I completely support banning just based on single card unfairness, not whether or not it's actually a problem in Modern. Next up, we got Chromatic Lantern, and of course, the only other time this was printed was Return to Ravnica, so you know what that means? Double Rainbow! What does that mean? Get it? Multicolored, chromatic, rainbow, now it's been printed twice, there's two of them, double rainbow, yay memes. This card's classic. Lands you control have tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So, you could also tap it itself for a mana of any color. This basically turns all of your lands into every other land without actually changing its type. Or I should say it's domain, it's not usually considered a type, whatever, long story. Love this card, and it was one of the big, big powerhouses in Return to Ravnica, and that is the only time it was printed, and they're about $10. So, considering the usefulness of this, and, I mean, it's in every format. I mean, all of them. This is the color-fixing card. I would expect this to be at least uh, double the current price, which is 20 Well, I mean, it's 10 so it would be 20 Next up is Chrome Mox, for who the hell knows what reason. Chrome Mox was just printed in Eternal Masters. The only other time it was printed was Mirrodin. I mean, unless you count the, um, like, some promotionals, some world championship cards, that kind of stuff. Could have sworn it was Judge Promo, too, but... That's not what online is saying. Chrome Mox is a classic, though. You can throw it down for zero, which makes it very popular in uh, Vintage and Legacy. I think it might be banned in one of those two, though. But it is imprint. Everybody loves imprint. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, you may exile a non-artifact, non-land card from your hand, so you got to get rid of something colored. And then you can tap it for the rest of the game to add one mana of any of the exiled card's colors. So if you do a two or three color spell, there you go. There's your color fixing. Hope you didn't need the card, though. So it's not that powerful, and it's not legal in Modern. Because of that, the uh, original from Mirrodin is 15 bucks. The Chrome Mox from Eternal Masters is 14 
uh, just because it's a Mox and it's kind of like a fixed version of the original Mox, I think people will want to collect it. So I could see this hitting even upwards of 30. Next up is Cloudstone Curio. Whenever a non-artifact permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. Can you say infinite combo potential? ETB effects with zero cost? Holy crap, I have no idea if that's how it's played. I've never even heard of this card, but just reading it, that's the first thing that comes to mind. This was only printed way back in the original Ravnica, and that's it. Currently sitting at $15. I have no idea what the uh, new version of it will be worth, though. Next up is Crucible of Worlds. Now, this one I've heard about, and holy crap, does that look cool. Now, they had said that the artwork on the cards is going to be very, like, related to the block that it's in. So it doesn't just seem like, oh, we're throwing out reprints. And that's really cool. I like that. Totally screws up the storyline and the history of the card, but it's really cool. And this looks like the coolest artwork ever. Now, this was in 5th Dawn, 10th edition, and as a judge foil. And that's it. Doesn't get much more in need of a reprint than that, especially considering it's 60 or 65 freaking dollars. Holy crap. Why does it cost that much? Hmm, maybe because it's legal and modern because it was in 10th edition, and you may play land cards from your graveyard? What? Not even basic lands. Just lands. So far, this is the winner on potential price. Definitely over $100. Next up, we've got Gauntlet of Power. I'm sure that's a video game, a movie, and probably a comic book name. This was printed in Time Spiral, and that's it. See a theme here? It's cards that are very limited supply, old and hard to get. Wizards hit the nail on the head with this one, and this card was getting up to $17 for the original, so I could see this going a lot higher, especially since it looks really cool. The only question is, these are in need of reprints for actual decks to be played with. So, do people really want to play with premium foils? They, they curve, you don't want to damage them. I don't know. It wouldn't be my first choice on how to do reprints, but, I mean, they're worth more money, and I open packs, so it benefits me. When this card enters the battlefield, choose a color. Creatures of the chosen color get plus one, plus one. And then, of course, whenever a basic land is tapped for mana of the chosen color, its controller adds one mana of that color to his or her mana pool. So, it's a really crappy five-cost overpriced version of Hall of Triumph, except it lets you tap your lands for double, which is insane. I prefer Nikthos, Trying to Nix, and Crypt Gas, though. Those are a little bit more efficient. It is much harder to blow up an artifact in Modern, though. Next up, we've got Lightning Greaves in keeping with, you know, the craftable, wearable Kaladeshi kind of style, which is really cool that they did that. Uh, this drops in for two, and then it equips for zero. Equipped creature has haste and shroud. I could have sworn that sometime around M15 there was like a pair of sandals that did something really similar, but they were like a weaker version. And I must re be right because it's sitting around five to six bucks. So not the most expensive, but it was printed in Arch Enemy, Commander 2015, the original Commander, Phyrexia vs. the Coalition Dual Deck, Mirrodin, and as a promotional FNM foil. Now here's the weird part. All the rest of them are five to six bucks, but the Friday Night Magic uh, promo, which is obviously kind of printed to death to a certain extent, $21. So I'd assume that the new ultra rare version of it will exceed that, and that is more than four times the cost. So who knows, if a card's worth 15, maybe it'll be worth, you know, eight times the cost or four times the cost. Who knows? Next up is a card that I know you're all familiar with. This is just unreal. It's Hangerback Walker. Yeah, he's back. This card was invented in Origins, which is legal right now, but as soon as Kaladesh launches, um, we're going to have Origins cycle out, so it's kind of odd to print Hangerback Walker that close, but Hangerback will probably be moving into exclusively the couple modern decks that it's in, uh, maybe a couple Legacy and Vintage, because you can technically cast it for free. I'm not sure what the big benefit would be there, though. But now we get a pretty version of it, and holy crap does this look better. It's a robot version of Hangerback Walker. It's basically the replicators from Stargate SG-1 versus pretty much everything from Oblivion and Skyrim. I love it, although I do hate this card. Big ol' overpriced Thopter Bomb. Okay, I like playing with it. I don't love playing against it. I think it's it, a prime example of a perfectly fair card. It's powerful, but it's fair. It's balanced, and it's not completely nuts. It's just utility, good, and now we get a pretty version of it. I could not be happier. Now, the weird thing is... Even with it being legal and standard right now, the original Origins version is down to $2.99. I remember them hitting, boy, at least 10 
the prices went up and down, and I remember they started low because people just didn't appreciate how good this card was. Then they finally realized it went in a really powerful Thopter deck, and it was off to the races. But now it kind of had its time, fell back down. We'll have to see what this one comes in at. I'm hoping 10+. plus. If it's under 10, I'm going to buy up every copy I can get my hands on. Next up, it's the Lotus Petal. That's right, we've got a whole bunch of offshoots from the Power 9. This was only printed in From the Vault Exiled and Tempest. Now, strangely, the FTV one is 30 bucks, and the Tempest one is only 650 So, apparently, people really like to pay more money for um, less common, more pretty versions, although it was just a premium foil version of the original artwork. So, now that we've got new artwork and they put gears all over it for some reason... Who knows what'll happen to the price? So what you do is you drop it in for zero, yay, affinity, and then um, sacrifice it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Classic affinity card, except not modern affinity because it's not legal in modern. In fact, it's even restricted in vintage because it's just so stupidly powerful. It looks complicated, but you, you draw this as a card, have it in your hand, you ditch it and get a mana. Simple as that. Oh, and it doesn't count as a land drop, so it's just straight up universal colorless ramp. Or, well, not colorless. Multicolor, any color, universal color. I think this one will be worth quite a bit. Next up, it's Mana Crypt. Again. If it looks awfully familiar, well, it doesn't look familiar, but if it sounds awfully familiar, it's from Eternal Masters. Yes, another Eternal Masters mythic reprint. Very strange choice. But the EMA version is sitting at $80, and the promotional version from, I don't even know, was $130, and then the Judge Foil was a whopping $225. Now, I wish I knew more about this card. I have absolutely no idea what they're referring to when they said that it was originally printed in Promo Set for Gatherer, and then, like, in parentheses, special. I have no idea what that was at all. Looks old, though, so it must have been way before my time. So apparently this was never even in a real set. Talk about hard to get, so yeah, definitely a good choice, but it was just in Eternal Masters. I would say that without a doubt this is the most expensive one so far that I've seen, though. You could be looking at two or 300 easy for the uh, Masterpiece Edition. This, of course, comes in for zero. Another artifact that comes in for zero because, you know, we just don't have enough of those in the game. And at the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, Mana Crypt deals three damage to you. Who cares? It goes in dirt cheap decks that don't give a crap about their life total. I meant that ironically. It's in Vintage and Legacy. But you can tap it to add two colorless. Holy crap. It's like Lotus Petal, except you get to keep it. Next up, we've got Mind's Eye featuring uh, one of the blue Smurf Cat race from Avatar. Um, Vidalkin. I like Smurf Cats a lot better. By the way, the Vidal can have six fingers. Seriously, go count them right now. I'll wait. See, told you, six fingers. This is from good old Mirrodin and then Commander's Arsenal as well. Um, the Mirrodin version is 11, Commander's Arsenal is 21, and this one will probably float in around, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 probably. It does cost 5, it is an artifact, but that is doable with artifact ramp. And whenever an opponent draws a card, you may pay 1 uh, generic mana if you do draw a card. That's pretty darn awesome, because you might pull like a force of will to respond to the other person. I don't know what deck this goes in, but it looks awfully cool. And next up, are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? It's the return of Mana Vault. It's a one-cost artifact. It doesn't untap during your untap step, unfortunately, but it does tap for three colorless. Remember, it doesn't have summoning sickness. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay four if you do untap mana vault, and then it taps for three. So, not sure what the point of that is, but when you drop it in, you get three mana. It's basically a three-for-one special. Now, the funny thing is, at the beginning of your draw step, if it is tapped, then it deals one damage to you, but I don't think that's that important in the deck set it goes in. This card was only in Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Revised, 4th Edition, 5th Edition, and then all the way up in Vintage Masters and Masters Edition 4, whatever that is. Never heard of it. Man, they are dusting off the antiques for this one. It's just a bunch of stuff that I've never even heard of. Obviously a vintage heavy uh, card. This is Vintage Affinity all day. Considering the color mix, you could put it in a lot more than that, too. Okay, so the the 4th edition and the 3rd edition of Mana Vault are worth about $13. The 5th edition is 14 for some reason, according to Card Kingdom. That doesn't seem right. 
Uh, the alpha version is, you know, just $620. The beta version is $610. Unlimited, because everything unlimited sucked, is worth $102 or 103 uh, the non-tournament legal collector's edition from the international something, probably some tournament, is uh, 30 bucks, And you can't even play with it. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> There's actually uh, two different collector's edition that are not legal to play with. So what's this going to be? I don't know, somewhere between $20 and 1000 probably. Next up, get ready for another big hitter. We're dropping in Mox Opal. The Mox Opal from Scars of Mirrodin. It was uh, one of the first Mythics. In fact, I think maybe Scars of Mirrodin was the first one to have Mythics. So not a lot of these floating around except, wait a minute, that sounds familiar. Yeah, it was in Modern Masters 2015. That version is still floating around for 40 and so is the Scars of Mirrodin edition. So I would think that this one with how beautiful it is, first time they ever did a different artwork, really super powerful. It's a zero cost artifact, again, with Metalcraft. You tap it and add one mana of any color to mana pool. Activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. Big honking affinity bomb. And this time when I say affinity, I mean modern affinity. This one is going to be expensive. I would be shocked if it didn't float in around 60 to 100. Next up, we've got another card that was only printed once, which that's always good when it's, you know, in an old set, only printed once, can't really get your hands on it. Here, I have another one, honestly, that you also can't get your hands on because, you know, it's one in 144 packs. But if they up the worldwide supply by 10,000, 50,000, I have no idea, you know, kind of hard to do the math on that. It's definitely easier to get your hands on it than the one time it was printed as a rare in Lorowin. You can drop it in for three, and whenever you activate an ability, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay do two <laughs> do. You may pay le do. If you do copy that ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. Let me just say, if this was mana abilities, oh my god. So luckily it's not. But there's like some take an extra turn stuff and just other really, really super powerful abilities that you absolutely would want to clone. The lower win edition of this is 21, so it's definitely played, definitely sought after, and definitely going to be worth a lot of money. Next up, got bad news for you. It's Painter's Servant. I hate this card. You hate this card. Everybody hates this damn card. It costs two. It's a 1-3, so it's an artifact creature. It can actually attack and block, which is hilarious. It's a Scarecrow for God only knows what reason, probably because it was from Shadowmoor, and that's the only time it was uh, printed. Uh, the Shadowmoor edition is $18, by the way, so, you know, it's not the greatest card as far as price, but a lot of people know about this card and what it does. It's a very big uh, sideboard card, and it actually fits in the main board of certain decks, too. As Painter's Servant enters the battlefield, you choose a color, all cards that aren't on the battlefield, spells, and permanents are the chosen color in addition to their other colors. So I'm blue, you're blue, everything's blue, stuff that hasn't been played yet is blue, all the spells I play are blue, everything's blue. I think that's actually the color that they usually pick too. I don't actually recall specifically what deck this goes in. So I think this is usually paired with a card that says like, your opponent can't cast spells of a given color or something like that. It's just some horribly unfair atrocity of a card. But here it is. It's probably going to roll in around 30 bucks. Next up, it's Scroll Rack Total Classic. Love it. Uh, this was printed in Tempest as a rare. It was given away as the World Championship Promo, which is a gold-bordered non-legal card. That was a Seattle 1998, of course. And then it was printed in Commander's Arsenal. Uh, that version is 40 the scroll rack from Tempest is $29, and the non-playable in any format card is a whopping $5.99. Um, I would pretty much just get the double cheeseburger combo meal instead. Seriously, gold-bordered cards were a massive failure, just massive. This version of the card looks so sick. This is uh, the first alternate art of it. I love it. It's an artifact that costs two. Obviously, they're going artifact heavy for flavor reasons because, you know, Artificers, Kaladesh, yay. Uh, you, you can pay one, tap it, exile any number of cards from your hand face down, then put that many cards from the top of your library into your hand. Then look at the exiled cards and put them on top of your library in any order. So it's a big honkin' flip-flop. This is like the mother of all scry. This is like scry draw on steroids for two and then only one to activate it, and it's an artifact. This can take a crappy opening hand and turn it into a perfect opening hand. And then you slowly get your crappy cards back that you didn't want in the first place. 
or crack a fetch land and shuffle up. Uh, so yeah, I anticipate this card being pretty darn high, probably 50 plus. Next up, it's Sculpting Steel. Another artifact, this can cost three. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any other artifact on the battlefield. That's huge. Not sure about the legendary ruling, but honestly, if you have it just clone a mana generator, there you go. Drives up Affinity, drives up Metalcraft, drives up everything. This is printed in 10th edition and Mirrodin, and those are worth $8 and $7 respectively, so apparently it's not the most popular artifact, but people play with it. Obviously, the artwork looks cool as hell, so who knows what it'll sell for. Maybe 15 bucks. Never know. And in keeping with unbelievably OP as balls artifacts, we've got Soul Ring, spelled S-O-L. Soul, of course, is the official scientific name for our sun. Even though most of it just call it the sun. And that's where the name Solar Radiation and Solar System come from. Hey, you learned something. You also learned that for one mana, you can drop it in and generate two mana. I hate this card, I hate Affinity, and I hate all the decks that play Affinity. I don't give two craps about Vintage and Legacy, but oh my god does Affinity need to be re-banned in Modern. It was already attempted to be banned once. Luckily, this specific card, of course, is not legal in Modern, but people love to throw it in their Commander decks. Now, because of that, uh, it's not really that expensive of a card. Uh, it was printed in 3rd edition for 7 bucks. Then, of course, the alpha version is around 200 beta is around 200 uh, The Commander 2013 edition is about 4 The Commander 2014 edition is about 3 It was also in Commander 2015. Hey, remember when I said this is a popular Commander card? 350 uh, The original Commander, 350 From the Vault Relics, that's worth 30 bucks, which is kind of weird considering it's not different artwork it's the same artwork uh then you got the unlimited edition which was 18 dollars because like i said unlimited sucked there was a promotional judge foil of it which was 160 so who knows what this one will reach probably not that much there was like a collector's edition there was a, there's a whole bunch of alternates of it basically but uh i don't know where this one will land it's not that popular if i had to guess i'd probably say like 35 40 Next up is probably what I would call the most unusual choice. It's a four-cost artifact creature, Golem. It's only a two toughness, two power, but when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, then put that card onto the battlefield, tapped, of course, then shelf your library. When Solemn Simulacrum dies, you may draw a card. Two huge benefits. It's Metalcraft. It's Affinity. It's awesome. It's also, unfortunately, from the 2012 core set. It's from Commander 2014, Commander 2015, the original Commander, and then, of course, Mirrodin. Now, this version of it looks a lot less like G.I. Joe, so it might be worth a little bit more than the about 5 to $6 it's worth from the other sets. Next up, we've got the most beautiful artwork version of Static Orb ever printed, especially since, well, there were only two other versions, 7th Edition and Tempest, both worth uh, $5.50. So considering its age, the limited print run, and the price, it can't be that great. I've never heard of the card. It costs three, though, and it's an artifact because, yay artifacts. As long as Static Orb is untapped, players can't untap more than two permanents during their untap steps. Hey, that's right, I have played against this card one time ever. It was a giant pain, and I hated it. Every single card that prevents people from untapping the lands should be illegal. It's just, it's too good. This limits it to two, but, you know, cards like Choke, they just need to be gone. Good news, though, it's not legal in Modern. Next up, a little bit of a strange choice as well, Steel Overseer. Uh, it's a two-cost artifact creature construct, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, you can tap him to put a 1-1 one, one counter on each artifact creature you control. The 2011 Corset version is worth 16 whole dollars, and even the version from the dual deck, Elspeth vs. Tezzeret, is worth $14.99. That's gotta come pretty close to paying for the whole dang dual deck. So what this one will be worth, I don't know, but hey, it's another artifact. So I think people who want to put together a really shiny vintage legacy or even potentially maybe modern artifact uh, affinity type deck, they might be happy with these choices. Next up is the legend itself, the Sword of Fire and Ice. This card is famous. If you haven't heard of this, what is wrong with you? It was printed in Darksteel. It was also in the original Modern Masters because, of course, it's a huge modern card. And it was actually a promotional judge foil, which strangely was only $90. The other versions of it are $45 and $50. I think this version is probably going to be between $80 and $100, though, for sure. 
Now it does cost 3 to get out and 2 to equip, but the equipped creature gets plus 2 plus 2 and has protection from red and blue. That is huge! Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, Sword of Fire and Ice deals 2 damage to target creature or player, and you draw a card. I mean, why don't they give you 2 mana, let you scry 1 too? I mean, they, they made this card do too many things. And that's why people play it, it can go in just about anything with creatures. Definite expensive card here. So naturally, next we've got Sword of Feast and Famine, another famous card. Very, very similar to the other one. This one you drop in for three, equipped for two. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from black and from green. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card and you untap all lands you control. These swords are OP as balls. They certainly cost enough to play with, and that's why it balances them out, and you could always just make sure that they don't deal damage to you as a player, but they're hard to play around and they're definitely powerful. Feast and Famine was a $19 card from Mirrored and Besieged, about an $18 card from the Modern Event deck, and then there was a Judge Foil that's worth $55, which makes me think that this version probably won't be worth a whole lot more. Hey, guess what one's next? That's right, Sword of Light and Shadow. Drop it in for 3, equip it for 2, Equipped creature gets plus two plus two and has pro white and pro black. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you gain three life and may return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Classic, classic card. It is a little bit hard to block the creature when it has pro two colors and they probably wouldn't even bother putting this in, usually from their sideboard, unless they know you're playing those colors, so it's really hard to destroy the creature. You basically have to go after the artifact itself when these come into play. Light and Shadow is a Dark Steel card worth $27. The Modern Masters 1 edition was $38, and the Judge Foil promo, strangely $40. So I couldn't imagine what this one's going to come in at. And the next card is Sword of Desolator. Just kidding, we're out of cards. That was the last one. What do you think? They're going to print the GTA again? I don't think so. So that's the breakdown. Obviously, they went, you know, flavor heavy. They changed all the artwork to be Kaladeshian. And then, um, you know kind of matched the whole artificer we're gonna build artifacts thing a little bit so i you know appreciate that because it's in standard i mean it would be really weird if it was like here have one phyrexian creature for no reason in a kaladesh pack that would not make a whole lot of sense you know what the hell is a mox opal doing in kaladesh but you know, whatever so what do you guys think are you excited about them you better be because they're worth a ton of money um which one's your favorite whatever else you want to say about it leave it in the comment section and i will see you next video